All right, guys, in this crash course, we're going to be talking about Gulp or Gulp.js. So Gulp is an invaluable tool when building JavaScript applications. And I know it can be a little confusing to new developers. And I think that's mostly because it's used for so many different things. It has so many different plugins. Um, so in this video, we're going to start from scratch and just talk about what Gulp is and some of the tasks that it's used for. So first, we're going to take a look at a couple slides and then we'll see it in action by creating a few tasks. All right, so technically Gulp is an open source JavaScript toolkit, also called a task runner. It's not a framework or a library. It's not like uh, React JS or Angular or anything like that. It's just a tool for building JavaScript applications. Now, this may be pure JavaScript or ES6 code. It could be a React application or Vue.js. It really doesn't matter what other technologies you're using. Um, Gulp works and it is, is installed with NPM, which is the Node Package Manager. So to install Gulp, you're going to want to have Node.js installed, and that's really simple. Just go to nodejs.org and go ahead and download it and install it. All right, and what's great about Gulp is that you can, you can take care of those annoying, repetitive, and time-consuming tasks. Uh, Gulp has its own ecosystem with hundreds of plugins for taking care of these tasks. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of those tasks. So uh, minification of scripts and styles. So if, if you don't know what minification means, basically it'll take a file, either JavaScript or CSS, it'll condense it, it'll remove all the white space, it'll remove all the comments, and this makes it much lighter, which in turn makes your application faster. So Gulp can take care of that really easily. Um, it can also concatenate multiple files together into one big file, which again optimizes your app. Um, cache busing, which has to do with letting the browser know if there's a new version of a cached file. Testing, linting, error checking, all those helpful debugging tasks, Gulp can handle that. All right, there's even a web server plugin so that we can run our code on a development server. All right, so these are just, these are a few of very many tasks uh, and plugins that are available. All right, so we're going to get a little nerdy for a second and just talk about how Gulp works exactly. All right, so Gulp is built on top of what are called node streams. And a node stream is a continuous flow of data that can be manipulated asynchronously. All right, now these streams facilitate the connection of file operations through something called a pipeline. And a pipeline is basically a chain of processing elements, and they're arranged so that the output of one element is actually the input of the next element. All right, um, so we can essentially set up single purpose Gulp plugins to run task after task. And this is all done using the pipe operator or pipe function. Um, so basically one plugin could be used to minify the JavaScript files and then it'll be piped to the next one, which could, let's say, compile SAS files down to, to regular CSS and so on. All right, and the original files aren't affected at all until the plug all the plugins are processed. All right, and I think this will be, uh, it'll become a little more clear when you actually see the code and see it in action. All right, so Gulp isn't the only task runner out there. One of the other big ones is Grunt, which you may or may not have used or heard of. Now, I'm not here to bash Grunt. It's a great tool. Uh, I just prefer Gulp, and I think Gulp seems to be a, a bit more popular in the JavaScript community. All right, so one big difference is Gulp is code over configuration and gulp tasks are coded uh, using node style syntax while grunt is configuration over code meaning that all the tasks are configured inside of a, a configuration object inside of the grunt file all right so you'll have to figure out which method you like better but overall i prefer gulp i think gulp is much easier to read um, you can easily define the task and the pipe operator Gulp is also based on streams, which we talked about, and Grunt is based on files, all right, and configuration. So that's enough for the slides, guys. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how Gulp works. All right, guys, so we're going to jump in and get started with Gulp. Now, as I said before, you're going to need Node.js, uh, and this video is going to be completely cross-platform, whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux, and uh, you just need to install Node, which you can get at Node.js.org. Just download it, install it and you should be good. Now, as far as a uh, command line, I'm on Windows and I'm using something called Commander. I actually did a video on it if you want to check that out, but it just gives us 
um, some, some extra options and it looks a lot better but you can if you're on Windows just use your you know your standard command line all right and of course your Mac or Linux terminal all right so first thing we want to do is install gulp globally so we're gonna do npm install okay npm is node package manager make sure uh, you have that in node.js they both come together and we're just gonna say dash G for global and then gulp okay so this will install gulp, gulp globally um, which means that you'll have access to it from anywhere on your system alright um, so now what we want to do is create a folder for our project so I'm just gonna do make dir and let's call this we'll call it gump uh, gulp X app for gulp example app and then let's CD into that okay and then what I'll do is open this up in Adam which is the text editor I'm using so I can just say Adam dot and that should open up in the directory okay you don't have to use Adam you can use whatever you'd like sublime text is really good Visual Studio Code or even something like notepad plus uh, plus is all fine now we want to create a package.json file in this directory which is kind of like a, a manifest file it'll hold all our application uh, metadata as well as the dependencies and all that so to, to create that easily we can just do npm init for initialize and then it's going to ask us some questions I'm going to keep the default folder name as the the app name version that's fine description we'll say example app using gulp and entry point that's fine we'll just enter through the rest all right and now you can see it created this package.json file with that info now we install gulp globally but we also want to install it locally so to do that we're going to say npm install and this isn't something gulp isn't something we use in production so I'm going to save it as a dev dependency a development dependency to do that we do dash dash save dash dev all right and then we want to say gulp and then that should show up over here in this package.json file once it's installed okay there it is all right so now we're gonna start getting into our file structure so right now we just have our package.json and our node modules folder which is created automatically um, what I'm gonna do is create a new folder called source or SRC and this is all of our our applications source code this is uh, before it gets compiled uh, what we'll do is we'll put everything in here and then all of our tasks that we run in gulp it's going to go through and it's going to compile it and then put it in a directory called dist uh, you don't have to call it dist you can call it build or public or or something like that it's basically your production application that you would actually up deploy to your server all right so uh, we're also going to need a file in the root directory called gulp file .js. And this is this is the only file we need for gulp for what we're doing um, this is where we, we we describe all of our tasks okay everything we want gulp to do so the very first thing we're going to do is bring in gulp okay so I'm going to use es6 syntax and use const but you can use var or let um, but let's say gulp and we're going to require that and we just want to say require gulp and since we installed it locally as a module it's going to know exactly where to look which is the node modules all right so that's all we're going to bring in for now we will be bringing in gulp plugins but uh, we're just going to leave that for now okay now before we move any further there's uh, a couple of things that i want to mention okay so these are going to be the gulp top level functions okay and you should know what these four things are so first we have gulp dot task and what that does is it allows us to define tasks all right uh, we're also going to have gulp dot src and this is going to be or this is going to point to the files to use all right then we have gulp dot dest okay or destination and this is going to point to the folder to output and then we have gulp.watch, which will watch files or yeah, watch files and folders for changes. Okay, so we don't have to keep running the gulp command. These are the, the four basic functions that we're going to use in this file. All right, so let's do something really easy and let's create a task that will just log out a message. 
All right, so let's put a comment here and we'll say logs message. It's good to put a comment to, to tell the user what it does if someone else is using your, your code. All right, so remember we use gulp.task to define a task. And you can call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it message. And then it's going to have a callback function right here. And then what we want it to do. So we want to return a console.log. And let's just say gulp is running. All right. So simple as that to create a task. So let's go ahead and save this and then we can go to our project directory in the command line here and we can say gulp message. And right here you can see it says gulp is running. It gives us kind of a timeline. It says using the gulp file, starting the message task, it runs it and then finished the message task. All right. And you can have it do absolutely anything that you want. All right. Now, if you don't want to specify the actual task, you know how we did gulp message, then you could put it in the default task. So let's say gulp dot task. Actually, I'll just copy this and then change this to default. And now if we go over here and we just run gulp, you'll see it runs that the console log. All right. So Let's go ahead and create a, an easy task to to copy HTML files. So in the source folder, we're going to create a new file called index.html. All right, and then let's just put some basic tags in here. We'll just say my example app and let's just put an h1 and we'll say my example app. All right. And then I'm going to create one more HTML file. We'll just call this about.html. And let's copy everything in here and paste that in and we'll just change the heading here to about us. Okay, it doesn't really matter what's in these files. Now, for the most part, you're not really going to want to do any do much with your HTML files because they're just static. It's just static markup. Um, so we do want to copy it to the desk, uh, the dist folder. So we're going to set up a task that'll do just that. It's just going to take those HTML files and copy them over. So let's put a comment here and we'll say copy all HTML files and let's say gulp dot task and we can call this whatever we want. Let's just say copy HTML and then we'll put our function and then what we can do is we can say gulp dot source. Okay, so remember source points to the files that we want to use. So the files that we want to use are all the HTML files in the source folder. So let's say source slash and then star dot HTML. So that's going to look at any file that has an HTML extension. All right. And then what we want to do is pipe it. Um, so we're going to do dot pipe. And then we want to in here put gulp dot dest for the destination. And it's going to be into a folder called dist. Okay, and you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be dist. So let's go ahead and save that. And then if we go over here and we run gulp copy HTML, okay, you can see that it ran. And then if we look over here in our folder structure, there's a dist folder. We didn't even have to create it, it does that on its own. And it brought over index and about. All right, so this is our basically our production application. This is our source code. Now, in some cases, you might see the HTML files outside of the source and outside of dist. And then what they'll do is, uh, for instance, if it, if they have tasks to minify the JavaScript, they'll put the, the minified JavaScript in here and then just point to the dist folder from their HTML. Okay, you might see something like that. But I like this how we just have the entire thing in dist and we can just simply upload it to a server or whatever we're going to do with it. All right, so let's let's find some stuff that's a little more useful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's optimize images. So there's actually a plugin we can use. Let me just go over here, and it's called Gulp Dash Image Min, and and this will take your image and optimize it automatically. All right, so if we go on here, we need to install this, and we're going to save it as a dev dependency, and then this gives us a basic example that we'll use. So let's go over here and say npm install. Uh, we want to do save dev and then gulp dash 
image min. Okay, and then what we'll do is go over to our gulp file and we need to bring that in as well. So we'll say image min and set that to require and gulp dash image min. All right, and then we can get a simple example from the website here. I'm just going to grab this. Okay, and let's put this right here. We'll say optimize images. Paste that in. I don't want it to be called default though. Let's just call it image min like that. All right, and then you'll see we're doing the gulp.source. We want to look in a folder called images in our source. So let's create that folder called images. And then it's going to pipe and it's going to run the image min function, which is going to take care of, you know, all the stuff behind the scenes, making the image smaller and so on. And then it's going to pipe it to dist slash images. Okay, and we don't have to create it. It'll, it'll be created automatically. So let's save this and then we're going to I'm going to actually need an image. So let's go over here and let's look for we'll say gulp logo. All right, and then let's grab I guess let's grab this here and we'll just go view image and let's save it. Oh, that's an SVG. I don't want that. You know what? Let's just say gulp js png. All right, so let's grab this. So we'll save it. and we want to go to projects and then where is it right here and source images and we'll save it as gulp.png all right so let's take a look and see how big that image is so source images and if we say properties you'll see that it's 19.1 kilobytes which is not that big uh but let's go ahead and let's run over here gulp image min okay and now over here you actually let's go let's go to it over here and in the dist folder it now has an images folder and let's take a look at this properties and now look it's 2.67 kilobytes so it shrunk it it optimized it quite a bit all right and there's a bunch of different options if you look at the documentation for image min um There's a bunch of, of options you can use as far as how much to optimize it and so on. All right, but we're not going to get into the details of the that particular plugin. All right, so now what I want to do is I want something to minify our JavaScript with. So first of all, let's create some JavaScript. So we'll go in the source folder. Remember, you shouldn't be touching anything in the dist folder. Uh, so in here, we'll create a new folder called JS. and let's create a new file called file1.js. All right, and in here let's put some comments. We'll just say console log1 console.log and let's say this is file1 and then I'll grab this. We'll put some white space. I'll just enter down and then let's say 2 this is file2. All right. So we'll save that. and then we want to minify this and there's a few different plugins you can use we're going to use one called uglify so let's go over here and say npm install save dev and it's going to be gulp dash uglify all right and then we'll go over to our gulp file and of course we need to bring that in just like we did with these so let's say uglify and set that to require gulp dash uglify all right and then we'll go down here and create a new task say minify js and let's do gulp dot task and we'll just call this minify all right and then what we want to do is say gulp.source and define the files we want to look for and that's going to be in our source folder slash js slash and then any javascript file so star.js all right and then get rid of that we want to pipe it so let's say dot pipe 
and we need to call the uglify function like that. And then we want to set the destination. So uh, pipe and then in here we'll do gulp dot And we want that to go to our dist folder and then into a JS folder. All right, so let's save that and remember what our file one looks like in the source code. And then we'll go over here and run gulp minify. And then let's look at our dist folder JS and then file one and all the comments are removed. All the white space is removed and now it's a it's a lighter file. Okay, it is ugly, but it is lighter and it's optimized. So that's how we can easily minify JavaScript. All right, so let's keep it going. And now what I'm going to do is add a plugin called Gulp SAS. Now, if you don't know what SAS is, it's a CSS precompiler. I have a couple videos on it and it's similar to less. And it gives us functionality like uh, it, it lets us use variables in our CSS. It lets us use mix ins, which are kind of like functions nesting. There's a there's a lot of different things uh, and a lot of reasons to use something like SAS. So let's install the plugin npm install save dev and it's going to be gulp dash sas. Okay, notice all the plugins are prefixed with gulp dash. And then let's go over to our gulp, gulp file and let's say compile sas and we'll do gulp dot task. Okay, and we'll just call let's just call this sas. Okay, and we need to do our gulp source source and let's see in here we want to put the location which will be source slash sas slash and then star dot scss okay sas files are they use a, an scss extension so we're basically saying any sas files in this folder okay and then we're just going to pipe and in here uh, let's see actually you know what I actually want to do. Yeah, we'll do SAS and then we can also do a dot on here and we can say on error because sometimes we'll get an error, for instance, if we define a variable wrong or something like that. And then we can just do SAS dot log error. OK, and all this stuff is on the documentation for that plugin. And then we just want to do our destination. So here we'll say gulp dot dest. And that's going to be in the dist folder and then in a CSS folder because it's not going to be SAS anymore. It's going to get compiled to regular CSS. So let's go ahead and save that. And then in our source folder, we'll create a folder called SAS. And in here, we'll create a new file called, let's say, style.scss. All right. And then I'm just going to define a variable. All right. So let's say uh, we'll call this a BG color. And Let's set that to uh, gray. All right, and then let's just put in a body and we'll add we'll add a background. And let's say we want that to be that BG color variable. All right, so we'll save that and then let's go over here and run gulp sass. And it looks like something is wrong. SAS is not defined. Did I not save this? Gulp task. Uh, let's try that again. SAS is not. Oh, I didn't bring it in up here. That's right. So we need to do const SAS. And let's set that to require. And that's going to be gulp dash sass. All right, let's try it again. OK, now if we look in our dist folder, sorry about that. There's a CSS file and style dot CSS. And look at that. It compiled the sass. There's no more variable because obviously that's not allowed in regular CSS, but it put the gray for the background. All right, so this is starting to come together. Now what I want to do is edit the index.html file in the source, and we're going to add a link here to go to that compiled style sheet. So it's going to be CSS slash style.css. And then down here, let's put 
our script tag and let's point to js slash file one dot js. All right, so we'll save that and let's also um, do that in the about file. I'll just copy all this. Paste that in and then I'll change this. Okay, now I want to copy these over to our dist folder again. So let's go over here and let's run gulp. Uh, what was it? Copy HTML. All right. So now if we look in our dist and we look at index, you can see it has those. It's pointing to those files. So let's go ahead and open that. Okay. Make sure you're in the dist and we take a look and you can see if we look at the source code, it's it's bringing in those files. So that's good. Um, what I want to do now is show you how we can have all of our tasks run uh, with one command. So let's go back to. Let's see, I hope this all these files aren't confusing you guys, but let's go back to our gulp file, which is the most important. And what we'll do is go down to the default and instead of putting a function here with with a single task, we can actually put in an array with the tasks we want to run. So let's do all of them. Let's do message. Let's do copy HTML. Let's do let's see image min. And what else minify. And let's do SAS. All right. So now if we save this and I'm going to delete everything in the I'm going to delete the whole dist folder okay, completely. And then let's go over here and then let's just run gulp. And look, it, it did all of those tasks and it also recreated the dist folder with all that stuff. So we can now go back to our file and reload and it should be good. All right. So last thing I want to do is I want to create one more task to concatenate all of our JavaScript files together. So let's go to our source folder and go to JS and we're going to create a new file called file two dot JS. And in here, let's just say console log and we'll just do we'll say this is file two and you know what let's do an alert too this is file two all right so we'll save that now we need one more plugin for this and it's a gulp concat so let's do npm install save dev and we're going to do gulp dash concat. OK, and let's go over to our gulp file. Make sure we bring it in up here. So let's uh, what is this again? This is concat require gulp dash concat. All right. So what we want to do is we want to take file one, file two and anything else is in, that's in here, combine it into a file called main.js. OK, and that's what will get compiled. So I'm going to create a function here. Let's just say scripts. All right. And then we'll just do gulp dot task. Call it scripts. Oops. All right, so in here, uh, what we want to do is say gulp dot source. OK, and the location is going to be in the source folder slash JS, and then we want all JavaScript files in there. So star dot JS. And then let's see, let's do dot pipe. And in here we want to run Oops, that's not what I want. I want to do concat. And then let's do our gulp dot dest. And then the destination is going to be the dist folder and then JS. All right. Now, if we were to just let's go down here and add scripts. Now, if we go ahead and run this, what it's going to do 
is it's going to see minify and it's going to minify uh, file one and file two and then bring it over to the disk folder and then it'll go down here and then it will concatenate file one and file two into a file called oh right here we need to define that into a file called main.js but it won't be minified because that already happened all right and we don't, we don't want both of the files to go over we just want the main js so what we're going to do is grab this which is the part that actually does the minifying and we're going to put it right under the concat and then we don't want to run this because this file will actually um, concatenate and then minify main js so we just want to take minify out of the array down here we don't want to run it all right you could even delete it if you want So let's save that and then I'm going to delete the whole dist folder. And then let's go over here and just run gulp. Okay, and then let's look at our dist folder. If we look in JS, now there's only main.js and it's all concatenated. Okay, file 1 and file 2 is all in there. So, let's go back to uh actually let's go back to our HTML because now we don't want file 1 included. We want main.js. same thing with about all right and then we'll run gulp one more time to copy those html files and then let's open up this and reload and we get that alert that says this is file 2 all right if we look at the console it runs the the logs from both files all right guys so that's pretty much it the last thing i want to show you is how we can just constantly watch instead of having to to type gulp every time we change something Uh, so we'll go down to the very bottom here and say gulp dot task. Okay, this is going to be called watch, and then we're going to have a function, and then I'm going to paste this in just to save a little time. Okay, so what this will do is it's going to run all of these watch commands, and what this takes as a parameter is the location to watch or in the file type. and also the name of the task. So for this it's scripts and we have our image min, our sas, copy html, all that stuff and then just the files that it's supposed to be watching. So if we save this now and we go over here and we run gulp watch Let's see why to do that. Uh missing what did I do? Oh, I don't have a comma there. Should be a comma. All right, let's do that again. Gulp watch. And now you'll see it it's watching it. So if we go and change, let's say in the index and we say my awesome app, save it. You'll see over here it ran copy html. If I go and I change, let's say file 1 to this is file and we'll do 1, spell it out, save it. and you can see it ran scripts and if we go over to our app reload and my awesome app and then you can see that's changed as well all right so that's going to be it guys hopefully you learned something from this we went over quite a few different common tasks and hopefully you'll use gulp in your your upcoming projects thanks for watching if you're not subscribed please do so uh and leave it a like if you liked it dislike if you didn't and thanks for watching